There's a lot of 10 mil dynamic drivers on the market. I think these definitely stand out as being more musical than most. <laughs> Hey sports fans, uh, today we're talking about the Gimlet IEM. It's a Canera QOA Gimlet. QOA stands for Queen of Audio. Um, I'm getting a little bit confused about who's making what these days. Uh, Lin Sol were good enough to send this to me. Now this is a 10 mil dynamic driver and it comes with you know a couple of really nice cards. It comes in a very, very attractive box, which also has, and this is my failing point and I have to confess this to you, but it does actually come with a really nice black case and also includes some additional silicon tips. Now, hold that thought. It's not too far off the Joy Audio Shine in terms of it's a slightly larger case than this and it's kind of black, uh, which is great for carrying your IEMs in. And it's got silicon tip, additional silicon tips, uh, but not like this because this is the Joy Audio Shine, which we'll talk about later. So. Apologies for leaving the silicon tips and the case in the office, um, but it's not really about those, right? Let's talk about the IEMs themselves. So the driver is a 10 mil dynamic driver. It's an LCP dynamic driver, and that's what's powering both sides of the IEMs. Uh, the cable is a four core OFC silver plated, which is kind of quite normal. Gold tip, uh, 3.5 mil pin. Cable's about typical 1.2 meters. Uh, if that's what you're after. It's a 32 ohm resistance at 108 dB and you've got uh, a 20 to 20 kilohertz frequency uh, range, which is, you know, pretty standard. One of my favorite things about this IEM is that it actually has a tensioner. And now I've been asking for this on all the budget IEMs where I've reviewed over the years. Please just add a tensioner. It's not hard to do. And so these guys have done that. And if you're not familiar with what a tensioner is, uh, obviously you will um, run the IEM down your back, which is where it's meant to go. And then you have this, this is a, a, a ball in this example. It's a very small clear ball. I'll hold it up in a minute. So you push that up at the back and it just tightens the cables at the back pulls back slightly on the IEMs and just gives you a much more secure fit. Now this is what you're gonna see with uh, people on stage who are using these for like vocals and IEMs, uh, vocal IEMs or, or musician IEMs or whatever. These I don't think are, are suitable for that application. For audio files, they're perfect and for general comfort. So I love the tensioner. And let me hold it up for you. Just hopefully you'll be able to see. It's just a nice, clear perspex ball that goes up and down on the cable. The cable also includes a uh, kind of fixed on Velcro um, tier so that it's so much easier just to wrap this. And again, you never want to wrap these too tight and you never want to pull on them in, in case that you, you obviously damage, you want it to be nice and loose, but then it's nice and easy just to wrap that Velcro around and then you can, uh, you know, you've got a nice ready thing, straighten the case. Now, those are small things, but it's just those little details that make these a little bit easier to manage and use. The Gimlet is actually named after a gin drink, which, um, you know, the, with these, they say they're, they're, they're a little bit drunk um, and a little bit of a good time, and I, and I definitely think that's true of these IEMs, and we'll talk about sound in a moment. The last thing I want to talk about, there's a, a 0.78mm uh, two-pin cable adapter here, but it, they've done it in a round in a round housing, which is kind of quite cool. Instead of like a, a a rectangle shape, which you'd normally get, or a square, they're a round kind of gold looking uh, finish, which is kind of nice. Now these come in a black uh, and a white. One thing you'll notice is they're really quite heavy. Uh, really took me by surprise when I pulled them out. I thought, well, I don't know how comfortable these are going to be. Once you get them in your ear though, they sit really, really nicely on the medium tips. And so typically the uh, medium tips are fine for me for, for just about all the IEMs that I review. True again of these ones as well. I do have to twist them quite a bit forward and in to get a really good seal. And again, like any IEM, that seal is absolutely critical. If you're lacking any seal, the base on these is gonna fall apart and you're gonna think they're horrendous. These things come in around $59 and I think they definitely suit that price. I would be happy to pay probably even another 10 or 20 bucks. So why? Let's talk about sound for a little while. 
The sound signature on these is really good, almost great. I think they just are really well balanced. There's no particular V shaping to them. Uh, there's just, you know, there's bottom end there, but not super amounts of sub bass, but it's impactful enough and it doesn't overshadow anything else in, in the sound kind of frequencies across the range. The mids are lovely, the vocals come through really nicely and the treble just kind of balances all that out without being too screechy and without kind of rolling off too early. When I first put them in, I thought, okay, so in terms of uh, a pick up and go, I've, I've often touted how much I like the Shure SE215s. Uh, they make probably a better musician's in-ear monitor than just for audio files, but they've always stood me well because I do like the bottom end. These, I think, at the price, I'd pick these up and take them as a carry-all anywhere. Anything I threw at these things, whether it was pop, hip-hop, rock, vocals, acoustic, all sounded really nice. So I think in terms of an all-round IEM at about 59 bucks, or around the $60 mark, definitely under the $100 mark in the budget range, these I think uh, show that they've continued to progress um, in that kind of chi fi space, um, as you guys call it, and just uh, have been tuning and just sweetening up the sound with every IEM that they put out. So very, very happy, and I think uh, that you know the weight might put you off at first but you'll find that they do actually help just to seat them and sit them in i'm not sure the white and gold is really my color i would probably go with the black but they really do look lovely there's a lot of 10 mil dynamic drivers on the market i think these definitely stand out as being more musical than most i do feel there were times when i would have liked a little bit more musicality out of them but i think that's a really harsh criticism at the price I almost just wanted to feel a bit, you know, what I call that that Pratt experience, where, you know, it just feels like everything is just on the money, but it's kind of alive and exciting, and you kind of get a little bit emotional when you're listening to music. I didn't feel emotional over these, but I really did enjoy listening to them. So again, that's a probably a pretty harsh criticism. The nozzle size from the driver is about six mil, so there's a lot of like. I just feel like that's just got good open pipes, but that's a pretty typical size if you wanted to play around with different foams, maybe different silicon tips to see if you get a bit, better fit and a better seal. So the Gimlet from Queen of Audio, a beautiful box, comes with a case, all the bits and pieces that you need, and I think it really does sound fantastic. So I would easily give these a four and a half out of five because I think that they deserve it. And I would love to hear you know, if you've got them or if you're gonna get them, uh, what you think of them in the comments below. Look forward to talking there. Bye for now.